What's up YouTube? Today I want to show you a really cool trick that I discovered for creating your own drawable waveforms in Bitwig's grid. So this is kind of like wavetables because there's a particular trick that I figured out on how to morph between various different drawable waveforms. Anyway, I want to show you this really cool trick. Let's dive in and have a look. So I've just added a blank instance of the polygrid over here and let's open it up. So what I want to do is I actually just want to remove the basic oscillator that is uh, defaulted to start with. I want to make use of the ability to set the steps mode to kind of act like an oscillator. So I'm just actually going to drag it a little bit bigger. And what we can do is we can set this first to not grab phase information from the clip. So then what's going to happen is it's not actually going to cycle until we actually send information to the phase input. And then what we can do is we can set this to interpolation and bipolar. So now what we can do is we have the ability to kind of draw in these interesting shapes. Furthermore, we can actually set the step count, you know, much higher to kind of get like more resolution in the kind of shape that we want. So, okay, first step is done. What we want to do is we want to duplicate this, right? And so here, for example, we can have like a different shape. Are you guys following? So what we want to do is uh, let's actually just make them like vastly different here like that. Okay, so what we want to do here is we want to get these to cycle at audio rate. We can do that by simply sending it a sawtooth signal and that's going to act as the kind of phase signal. And so once they're both synced up like this, what's going to happen is if we play MIDI notes, and go lower down in pitch, you're gonna see that it's actually gonna slow down, or if we go higher in pitch, it's gonna speed up, etc. So that is the kind of behavior that we do want. And we can even change that further by adjusting the actual oscillator itself. What we can do is we can also put in a phaser. So what this does is it essentially acts as the sawtooth oscillator, but spits out raw phase. So what's gonna happen is it's going to always be in sync. Sometimes with the raw oscillators, when you turn the feed, when you turn the frequency to low or to high, it starts to do wonky things. So using raw phase with the phaser is actually a better idea. So we can actually tune this down and do all sorts of things if we want. You see, we can go like really low, like capture the visual element as we need. Okay, so anyway, now we wanna move on to the next part, which is a merge. So with this, we want to send both of these inputs into the merge. And just for now, we can actually create an oscilloscope. Let's send the output of the merge into the oscilloscope. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to set this to slow so we can kind of see the movement. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to create a value. And let's use this to modulate the input of the merge. So do you see how it slowly morphs from the one shape into the other shape? So here, if we set this to nearest, what's gonna happen is it's just gonna snap. As it gets to 50%, it's gonna change the shape. So depending on the type of you know sound that you want, if you want it to slowly morph from one sound into the other, then you wanna set it to linear rather than nearest. So you can kind of get that morphing sound. So anyway, Let's send the output of this into the ADSR. We can tune this back to a normal pitch. Do a bit of housekeeping here. Okay, let's see what this sounds like. In fact, we can make these a little bit smaller even, or we can go like this. Okay, so I'm just gonna put uh, some effects afterwards here. So here's a cool trick. We can actually expand this idea and say, for example, let's put three or, or let's actually put four inputs into this merge. And now what we want to do is let's actually just expand this a little bit further. We can have like input one, input two. We can duplicate these, 
say like input three and input four. So now we can morph between four different shapes. You just draw in something different here each time. Oh, that's awesome. So what we can also do is we can make use of the voice stacking and get like a slightly different morph of the voice on each of the channels. So we're going to have to actually enable voice stacking over here. And then we can voice stack this parameter. And let's say we want a zero to one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload a preset, uh, not this exact one, I'm going to work on it a little bit, fine tune it, then upload it to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that like button. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.